Okay, let's talk a little bit about the um, sort of new focus of the IMF. Um, because, I mean, it's been always very much a bastion of sort of macroeconomic uh, stability. But now when I read uh, IMF literature, it's a lot about inequality and climate change and, and gender issues. Um, I mean, is, are you getting a little bit sort of touchy feeling, you know, uh, sort of a bit of a soft heart for the IMF? No. Um, we very much think that uh, those three issues you've, you've, you've mentioned are part of the uh, macroeconomic stability objective that we pursue. Uh, if you look at the articles of the IMF, we have to worry about growth, we have to worry about income, we have to worry about jobs. And when you start really digging deep into what's causing um, uh, slow access to the job market, uh, when we are looking into why isn't there sustainable high balanced growth, you inevitably hit those issues of inequality of opportunities, uh, lack of participation of women in the job market, uh, the issue of excessive inequality, and clearly climate change is, is an issue that is going to uh, weigh on, on growth going forward, which has massive fiscal dimension. When we advocate the gradual phasing out of subsidies, for instance, we are strongly encouraging countries to remove uh, a tool that is not helping climate change and that is taking revenue away from where it could help with health, with education and with productivity. Okay, let's finish off just by talking about um, financing for development because you've just talked about that recently in, in a speech and also talking about financial inclusion. So, I mean, what are the initiatives that the IMF is taking on, on development finance? We are part of what I regard as a, a once in a, in, a, in a generation occasion to make a difference in terms of development, in terms of uh, fight against poverty, in terms of climate change. So within our area of competence, we have tried to identify deliverables. You know, I don't want to be uh, advocating things that we cannot actually do. So we have increased access for low-income countries by 50%. We access to uh, loans and, and, and financial support. We have maintained the 0% interest rate for all the uh, vulnerable, fragile states when they borrow from us under particular uh, credit lines. And we have tried to focus on those that most need our help at those very, very concessional terms. So those are three deliverables in addition to okay. you know, the research uh, and the policy uh, guide. Just finally on financial inclusion, because the annual meeting is going to be in Lima in Peru, and I think you visited there recently, and you were quite impressed by the microcredit that's, that's going on there, and especially how it helps women entrepreneurs. Yes, and that is part of the, the theme of lifting all the boats, including the small ones, because there are many, uh, many roads to, uh, to that objective, one of which is, as you rightly pointed out, financial inclusion, making sure that people can actually uh, operate transactions, receive cash, put it safely somewhere, activate uh, you know, telephone cards uh, that will actually move money around and help women in very remote location to actually create their enterprise and, and generate business. Um, another road is the empowerment of women, uh, both in the workplace in society, making sure that they don't suffer the discriminations that exist pretty much everywhere for them. Okay, Managing Director, thank you very much. Thank you.